There are weapons and spells you can find quite early in Elden Ring that will completely change the way you play the game. And in this video, I'm going to show you a few more that, in many cases, carried me all the way to the end game and even made many, if not most, of the boss encounters much easier as a result. And of course, let's start things off with one of my favorites, which is the Great Sword. No, not the category, the actual Great Sword. You can acquire this from the abandoned caravan chest in the backside right here on the northern road in Caleb next to the smoldering church. I definitely suggest sneaking to the right side of the caravan to win some time before the annoying enemies jump on you. Though it's a bit gimped in its movesets compared to Dark Souls 3's version, it's still a very powerful weapon relatively early on in the game. It's one of the longest weapons in Elden Ring, which makes it pretty much OP at cleaving large groups of enemies, almost reaching your damage almost all the way to the back of your character if you do a big swing. Its dodge plus light attack is also very quick as you do a thrust attack with a sword almost like a pike pretty much impaling almost any enemy. The skill it comes with by default is also really awesome as you perform this uppercut slash that's pretty brutal and throws most enemies and even most bosses up into the air in a pretty funny way and also deals quite a ton of damage. But things become way more interesting when you upgrade it or add new ashes of war and the very early option that I really enjoyed was the gravitas. You can find it at the beach near the seaside ruins pretty much south of your starting area and after defeating this enemy that also uses a gravity spell against you. Now you can use this for massive AoE to like grab all of the enemies and pull them towards you and then quickly follow up with a huge cleave from the greatsword and pretty much take like 5, 6, sometimes even 7 or more enemies almost at the same time. It was really an amazing early on option that I was playing with especially since the weapon felt so overpowered against some of the enemy groups. Moving on to number 2, if you want an earlier option than this with a lower strength requirement, then the Battle Hammer is a perfect option for you. It's dropped by the Grave Warden boss in the Murkwater Catacombs, just a bit up north on the same river that the Murkwater Caves and the nearby invasions is located. It's less heavy and requires less strength investment while also providing an amazing damage and even more important, a guard break. It comes with with Braggart's Roar, which is an Ash of War that raises your attack power, stamina and defense by about 10% while also adding a new moveset to your heavy attack. So instead of doing the normal heavy attack when you have the Roar activated, you now have a charge that is followed up by a powerful swing. Completely breaking enemies guards by the way and even like the running part of it will interrupt and stunlock most enemies including some of the larger ones. You can follow up with another similar attack attack pretty much after this one, completely annihilating any enemy in the early stages of the game. The only downside of this weapon is that it's quite short compared to the greatsword, so it's closer range, but with that charge that you have and with the roar, I think you're going to fare quite well, especially since it gives you so much stagger and buffs early on in the game. But we can't talk about strong early on options without including this absolutely magnificent spell right here that pretty much fully carried my pure mage all the way to at least level 70. And this is called the Rotten Breath. It's something that you acquire very early on in the game actually. It's acquired from one of the churches of Dragon's Communion in South Caled for just one dragon heart, which you should already have if you beat the first dragon in Limgrave, but there's plenty of dragons in Caled anyway if you want to defeat some more. If you did not start with a class that has a starting seal, you will need a seal to even cast the Dragon Breath, but you can buy one for just about 800 runes from the round table merchant right here. Now the base requirements for this one is also quite low, just 112 FP, which means if you're playing with like a mage or even like a hybrid, this is pretty much perfect. What makes it so strong is its initial damage, but more important, the rot effect buildup that you will create on any enemy, especially bosses. You can hold the cast button pressed for as much as you have enough mana left, and you can continuously use it until you fully deplete your mana, which means this is quite a mana hungry spell, but you don't need to shoot it like entirely to fully infect a boss with rot. And that damage is a percentage damage of the enemy's HP over time, which means even if it has a million HP and you have like just 800, it doesn't really matter because it's going to deal percentage damage and none of the enemies nor bosses in the game 
can resist that. It doesn't feel OP if I were to say so myself. Personally, the damage over time, you have to wait for it a little bit, but it's not like super instant and you still have to dodge enemies' attacks, so I wouldn't say that this is a broken spell. It's just very, very good. Now, moving on to number 4, let's talk about another thing that saved my butt so many times, especially if you play with a squishy character at start, and that is the Crystallian Ashes Summon. There's gonna be a couple of summons I will cover in this video, but this is by far the earliest and also probably the best summon that I have personally used for my spellcaster build. We can find it at the Celia Hideaway over here in Kaelid, pretty much behind a graveyard there's going to be an illusion wall that you can break and make your way inside of the cave. Eventually, you're going to want to reach one of these adjacent paths in that cave all the way until this drop down into a secret room that holds three enemy mages. And besides them, there's going to be a chest that contains the item with the summon, so you can completely ignore them, get it, let yourself die, and you're going to be transported at the beginning of the cave. This is an excellent early on summon, both for damage and for tanking. Its attacks include an AoE spin, a ranged attack, and of course, it also is very tanky on top of that. So if you're having trouble with disengaging with bosses or maybe having a buffer between you and the enemies, this can be a perfect solution for that. It can resist for a long time, it deals good damage, it stays on the target constantly which means it's going to pull aggro from you. Meanwhile you can concentrate on unleashing all of your powerful spells and abilities and just go ham in at the target. Now this brings us to number 5 which contains multiple legendary weapons including the amazing Dark Moon Greatsword, the even more powerful Royal Greatsword, and finally the amazing Blight's armor set that you likely already set your eyes upon. And this is something that you acquire through Rani slash Rana's questline that I've already partially explained when we got the Frost Witch set from her. Now I will explain how you can follow this entire questline in just a little bit, but the Dark Moon Greatsword is one of the most amazing ones I've got so far. It has a pretty high intellect requirement of about like 38 and also still requires some 16 points in the strength and about 11 in dex, but I'm pretty sure that you should already have plenty of that if you reach about like 80, maybe a little bit more. Pointed with this sword truly shines. You get both physical and magic damage. And let me tell you that magic damage is quite absurd. You can deal over 1000 damage with a sword that isn't even like halfway upgraded. It's all around amazing. It applies a frost effect against the enemies, a frost buildup that helps you quite a bit to slow them down, but more important just to deal a ton of damage. And might I say that it also looks absolutely stunning. The even crazier weapon is going to be the Royal Grey sword and of course it also comes with Blight's outfit if you defeat him at the end of Rani's questline. Again I'm gonna talk about that in just a little bit but the Royal Greatsword is even crazier. Now the effect or the spell that you have on it is this jump attack where you jump in and impale the target dealing heavy damage. By the way all of this damage you're seeing right here is with a completely vanilla sword non-upgraded. Quickly followed up by an AoE frost blast that takes most enemies by surprise and also like throws them back on their butts. It will have strength and intellect requirements likewise with a slightly bigger requirement in strength of about 26 and also some intellect at 22 so again something that you will do after about level 60, 70 maybe depending on your build but definitely worth it. You're going to build up to something absolutely amazing, maybe even completely switch from a pure mage like how I did into something that utilizes the sword now and has some points invested into strength and I mean it's just all around such an amazing weapon to have and such a brutal type of attack against most of the enemies in the game. But to explain things really quickly the requirements are quite long and you have to complete her full quest line. You have to first meet her at the Church of Vela at the start and make sure that you actually talk to her. You then have to reach Rani's Rice Tower and be recruited by her which is done after exiting the Karya manor nearby and possibly also defeating the last boss over there that opens up the path away. After that you have to defeat Radan to reveal and make your way towards Nokron, the Forgotten City, and acquire the Finger Slayer Blade from the Night Scared Ground Altar. We already explained that in a previous video but there's also guides out there. Once you're done with that you have to talk to her again so she can give you the Carrion Inverted Statue and then you can go ahead at the Divine Tower of Lyurnia and acquire the Curse Mark of Death from the 
the top of the tower which is also a really awesome place to be and that gives you further rewards and armor sets. Once you're done with that, the second phase brings you to Rani's Rise again, this time around the second tower which opens up a portal so that you can reach Ainsel River. You're going to find a doll here sitting by this coffin that you have to take. It's Rani's doll and all you have to do is to talk to the doll to a nearby side of Grace so she can reveal that you have to take down the Baleful Shadow of Blight that can be found further venturing into the same area. Doing so will bring you to Noxtala, the Eternal City, and defeating the Baleful Shadow will bring you that discarded palace key that you can go ahead and use back at the Lucaria Grand Library. It's pretty much that chest that you could not open after defeating Renala, well this is the way you open it and it will finally give you access to the Dark Moon Ring. And this brings you to the final part of the quest line where you have to continue past the area where you defeated the Baleful Shadow, go past the Lake of Rot into a new place called the Grand and cloister and then use this coffin at the edge of the river to jump into the final final area and here you're gonna have to defeat a glenstone dragon that looks more menacing than he actually is it was personally quite easy on the mage but maybe because i had that really cool like ash summon with me once you're done with that there's only one thing to do which is to open up the area ahead go to the cathedral where rani's body is located and you can go ahead and descend into the underground passage and give her the ring. Once you've done that, you can collect the legendary moon sword right from in front of you. It looks absolutely stunning. And you can also make a return to Rani's Rise again because right in front of the tower, you can find Blyde and you can go ahead and defeat him to get his full gear, including that legendary weapon, but also the armor set. And I think it looks really awesome. It's one of the best looking armor sets in the game. Obviously, the game is filled with them, but this is just like a personal favorite of mine because of that wolf armor and the wolf headpiece that you can find nearby. On a final note, I do want to talk about a one final item that can also be found if you're paying attention during the same Rani questline, which is the Mimic Summon and possibly the strongest in the game. Now what you have to do is to basically head over to Knight's Sacred Ground once more right here in Okron the Forgotten City and right before you reach that area where you had to collect that stash for Rani to bring it during her main quest, there's going to be this fog wall right here that you can unlock with a yeah, stone wall key. And in this case, it's going to give you this really awesome legendary quality mimic summon and possibly the best one in the game actually, if you also build your character properly. So just to show you how mad this is, I was using my real gray sword and equipped that blind armor and then summoned the mimic, which mimics my character. And and my stats, well most of the stats that is. And look how absurd this is on its own without me even interfering or doing anything. It can hold on its own against bosses and not just that, it can kill bosses, like one shot bosses and take them down really quickly. It performs the same magic spells that you have equipped when you summon that mimic. Even more so, it can spam it more than you it seems at the very least. You can even consume like potions and heal itself in battle which no other mimic from my knowledge does and it's overall amazing it's just going to be as tanky as you are and will mimic what you have so if you're weak it is going to be weak but if you're strong it is going to be strong this is all i had for today of course totally let me know down below what else are you using besides these and if there's any other game changing items or weapons that you found in elden ring thanks so much for watching and i'll see you guys next time